I extend my greetings to the ladies and gentlemen who have assembled today in this venue. It is a matter of honor for Mongolia to host the Asia-Pacific Forum of National Human Rights Institutions. Asia and the Pacific is a big region, and human rights is the most important topic, I think. I am profoundly happy to welcome and meet with you the distinguished guardians of human rights across this big region, Asia and the Pacific. Once an eminent Mongolian poet said that the best of the professions is that of a teacher. Well, to me, the most respectable and the most responsible profession is the service for human rights. Of all the jobs, the most important is safeguarding human rights. It is a tough job. You often interact with the state, government, and officials who are practically armored with and shielded by human rights. A human being must work for his human rights, yet working for others' rights is an amazing service. And when working to secure others' rights, you deal face to face with organizations which are or are highly likely to infringe upon, violate human rights. You deal with those who arrest the police, the detention officers, the judges, the prosecutors and other law enforcers on a daily basis. And it often may be a case when serving for others, your own freedom is restricted, your own rights are disregarded and pressurized. Mongolia is a unique country in our region. In this hall, there may be the ones who were once coerced or intimidated for speaking for and defending human rights. There could also be topics which are avoided, kept silent. Please feel free to speak up in Mongolia. Talk freely about what worries you, what challenges you. In Mongolia, for speaking your mind, no one will cause you any problem, any discomfort. Therefore, please enjoy your freedom in Mongolia. Please be free and brave to advance your mission for human rights in Mongolia. Mongolia's path toward success in human rights wasn't easy, and perhaps it won't be easy in the future as well. Even today we are facing tough challenges and difficulties. In our constitution, we enshrined the most important declarations and provisions on human rights. We are also working to revise and amend Mongolian laws to conform to the constitution. Mongolia is a signatory to important treaties, conventions, agreements and protocols issued by the UN. We abide by these laws equally diligently as we abide by our national laws. It is hard to talk about human rights. I think human rights begins with the right to life. Since the day I swore in as the president of Mongolia, June 18, 2009, I initiated to abandon and announce a moratorium on capital punishment in Mongolia. As I entered my office room after the presidential swearing-in ceremony, I saw two draft decrees in my desk, one on pardoning a death penalty convict, changing the charge to a lifelong imprisonment, and the other one on execution. It was a tough decision for me, and I chose life. I chose pardoning. Since that day on, I have worked to abandon death penalty in Mongolia, not to execute a single person in my country. In the past, Mongolia had recorded the worst practice in death penalty and had been one of the countries with highest number of execution. North Korea, Belarus and Mongolia were seen as the worst examples with the most brutal secret practices, according to the Amnesty International. Today Mongolia is a country free of capital punishment. If our people were asked if they supported abandoning death penalty, probably they would have responded no. Yet certain issues, certain decisions need leadership. If a human life is valued dearly as the most sacred virtue, this principle must be upheld at all levels of state institutions. That's why we talk about those members of our society whose rights are being infringed upon, children's rights, women's rights, the rights of the physically challenged people. We have drafted and are submitting to the parliament a law against violence against women and children. We are revising our criminal procedures law. Mongolia works to uphold high the rights of the most vulnerable in the society. 
of those whose rights and benefits are being frequently disregarded. Past May, Mongolia hosted an international conference of the Freedom Online Coalition. Just think of it, such a conference is being held in our region, in this part of the world. Online freedom is a truly important right. Internet, social media have taken wide strides into our social life. There should not be censorship, no restriction here. Media freedom, freedom of speech and expression must have no barriers and obstructions. The fewer the restraints, the more responsible the officials, the leaders become. Human rights are violated not by ordinary citizens, but by officials, the power holders. This upcoming autumn, Mongolia will be running in the UN Human Rights Council elections. And I do hope that the states and governments of the countries that you represent will support Mongolia's candidacy. At the UN Human Rights Council, Mongolia will make every effort to achieve and materialize the goals, objectives and ideas that you aspire to achieve in human rights frontiers. Please do support Mongolia. We do earnestly hope to enjoy your support. So what was the departing point for Mongolia to reach where we are today? People would be surprised to speak of human rights some 20 years ago in Mongolia. What do you mean by human rights? We have only state, the government's rights. We have only the rights of the rulers, the rights of the officials. Have the ordinary people ever had any rights? Human rights are the rights that are exercised only in the West, went on the public discourse. Today, when we appoint our judges, we advise that the value they have to defend first is human rights. We urge our prosecutors, police, to serve the humans, the society, and not the government, the officials or the judges. And our laws are made consistently with this very principle. We do have incidences of violation of human rights. There are issues and challenges we face. Yet what is good about Mongolia is that we are open and transparent. Human rights are not about declaration. It's not about meetings, conferences, organizations as well. Human rights is life. It is a job to do. This is a job of officials. Only after stepping down, after leaving the office, they tend to address human rights and justice. The same may be true in the countries you represent. What we demand from our officials is to speak up and enforce human rights and justice while in office, while on duty. We demand them to make human rights the order of life, the order of the day. Only then will we trust, will the people trust. There is an emerging challenge in Mongolia. Even in the most democratic country, human rights are challenged. Human rights violations disguised under security concerns occur in democracies around the world. Special courts, special prisons, months-long detentions exist. In Mongolia, detentions last for many days too. To establish a felony, the law enforcers try to detain, first of all. We are now working hard to do away with this practice. And our Human Rights Commission is making every effort on this front as well. What we tell our law enforcers is that arrest and detention must be the final acts in the trial process, while in Mongolia the trial starts with an arrest. Law enforcers, police, I'm saying this again. This practice must be stopped. A crime, a felony, is established by investigating and applying other actions, but not by arresting. We will change this law. 25 years ago we lived in a system which for 70 years, in the course of three generations' lifetime, followed the Vyshinsky method of coercion of recognition of guilt by the offender. A law can be changed, but we see it is much harder to change people's mentality, the way of thinking. And the struggle is still going on in Mongolia. We are working hard to make these changes. And the second point, all have equal rights. But what is likely to emerge as a danger in Mongolia is that although all are equal in front of the law, those with more money tend to enjoy more rights. Officials in high seats tend to enjoy higher rights. And this is one source of human rights violations. We do attentively listen to and examine the complaints by ordinary citizens. Our law enforcers are diligently working to attend every complaint of the people. 
And we do recognize that human rights are equally applicable to those jailed officials who stole public funds, who shout out loudly of infringement on their human rights, although the billions and billions of their stolen money rests outside of prisons, capitalizing on the huge corruption web the official had weaved before his detention. So there are delicate nuances that must be clearly distinguished, which is a challenge in itself. Corruption, abuse of official power, official misconduct is a huge challenge for Mongolia. So how do we cope with them? How do we solve this problem? How do we eliminate them? True, all are equal in front of the law. And this holds true for the thief of the hundreds of billions of public funds who is jailed living behind his money and his corrupt web. However, that thief commands the power to coerce and in intimidate the law enforcers, to paint himself white and innocent. What do we do about this? How to end this evil? For Mongolia, this is a grave challenge. But we must solve it. The most important, our most sacred duty is to safeguard human rights. Be that an official, a soldier, an ordinary citizen, all have equal rights. And we must hold this right high. That policy line, that principle, must be tightly upheld by our lawyers and law enforcers. So what we are going to do next is to comprehensively revise our criminal code and cr criminal procedures law. We have revised our laws on court, on prosecution service, on police. These laws have been made to serve the people, every single member of the society. Now we are trying to change the laws that people use. We also must ensure the environment to secure the independence of human rights organizations. Our Human Rights Commission is capable and resourceful. It is very committed and is working hard in spite of difficult circumstances. That is why, recognizing the need and value of this organization in Mongolia, as the President, I am working with the Human Rights Commission to initiate the renewal of the Law on Human Rights Commission of Mongolia to strengthen the institutional setup of this body to provide for genuinely independent in terms of finance, in terms of appointments and staffing, and in terms of operations and institution. And we will work to achieve this goal. Human Rights Commission should not be the only organization, should not be the only human rights watchdog in Mongolia. Human rights will fully prevail in Mongolia only then when all, every citizen, every organization protects, respects and upholds human rights. Besides, we must address responsibility and accountability of officials. We must fight with irresponsibility and official misconduct. We see corruption as an official misconduct, but in a sense it is an abuse of human rights. It is an action against human rights. The money an official steals from the public funds would have otherwise been paid as a salary to an honest public servant. Our people must demand from the corrupt officials, well, give me my money back, give me my loan back, I can't get it, you took it away, you stole my salary away. Following you, your accomplices are stealing my wealth away. Such a way of thinking, such an attitude, such a treatment of corrupt behavior is needed in Mongolia, and in fact it is being instilled. To promote intolerance to corruption, all, including the president, must denounce such acts. What I'm speaking today from this rostrum is already known to my people. This speech is my principle that I uphold in my life. And in conclusion, I would like to emphasize that we must encourage the people and organizations working for human rights. We must promote such efforts in our region, Asia and the Pacific. Mongolia stands ready to host any international initiative, conference, meeting that addresses human rights. If you cannot address human rights in your country, bring up the issue and discuss openly in Mongolia. Mongolia does have good news, success and achievements. We do not intend to teach you, we are only sharing with our lessons. Mongolian democracy has brought good and bright to Mongolia. Yet there are problems, difficulties, challenges too, so you will see them too. We are walking the hardest path in our region. Many say that Mongolia is a front-runner among the many countries of our region on human rights front. There are problems and difficulties of the front-runners too. We must not look back, we must only navigate ahead. 
we must shed light, we must set an example. Therefore, your ideas, comments are very valuable to us. We attended and hosted many conferences and meetings. Merely attending a conference is one thing, but we shall work to translate into reality all the constructive ideas and convey to your governments and your respective organizations the fruits of our meetings and deliberations through notes and references. Our meeting today is not only a two-day event hosted in Mongolia. This meeting must become a milestone achievement. Sadly, many today can only pronounce the words human rights. We must work harder to ensure that human rights become an established lifestyle. Thank you very much for coming to Mongolia. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your efforts and actions. Mongolia shall always say yes to human rights. Enjoy your stay in my country. I wish every success to the work of the Forum. Thank you. We are greatly honored that the present today's meeting was honored by the presence of the President of Mongolia. And we are very much impressed to hear from his statement that the first egg he did upon becoming a president was to cancel torture practice in this country. Because torture is the most heinous crime. This is a, a supreme violation of human rights. And uh, this has to be protected. And what he did as a first act upon assumption as the president of this country is uh, greatly to be uh, admired. Torture is prevalent in many, many countries. And uh, today, right now at the moment, we are also discussing uh, as to how torture is to be uh, prevented. Uh, yeah. In my country also, can I talk about, um, uh, can I talk about that also? Uh, in my country, uh, we are also, we don't, we are not yet a party to the United Nations Convention Against Torture, but we are taking measures so that um, we can recommend to our government to become a party to the United Nations Convention on, on, on CAT. It's my great privilege and honor to be here in this country. Uh, I've held many international positions, like I've been an international judge at The Hague, I've been a Chief Justice, and I have been co-chairperson of UNESCO, and I'm the first chairman of the National Commission for Human Rights for Pakistan, elected by the parliament. While I was still away, I'm thankful for that, and uh, it's my first uh, visit after assuming office of the chairman. I've been greatly inspired by uh, the speech of His Excellency the President. Uh, you know, we used to think of uh, Mongolia as a country of warriors, and uh, Changes Khan and Halaku Khan coming all the way to the plains of uh, India and going up to Baghdad. Now here it's a complete transformation. People are talking of human rights. The president uh, is full of that spirit and uh, he he's a democrat. He believes in the rights of the people from the core of his heart. And that is what, what, I, what was visible. As we say in Latin, res ipsa locatea, the thing speaks for itself. The president uh, impressed me because we don't usually hear from uh, presidents uh, so many good words about uh, their belief in uh, human rights, in democracy, in uh, the right of the people to express themselves and especially uh, in, in a country like Mongolia, I think you become pioneers. And uh, as the president himself was uh, speaking, uh, that uh, you were at one time enlisted amongst countries with bad human rights uh, record, but is you have completely changed. And uh, I can see that. I'll speak about it in other countries as well. Uh, people here are friendly, you are a very organized society. You have respect for time and uh, human dignity. 
and uh, you have a president uh, who ha who deeply believes in uh, these values uh, of human right. So he does inspire me. But at the same time, the chairman of the National Commission on Human Rights is also a wonderful man. I mean, he, he believes in human rights and both of these leaders, I've, I've heard, have a passion for human rights. I think you will be, you will be in the front line, uh, so to speak, of good human rights record in all respects and uh, your president is the driving force. I must quote Confucius. Confucius, the great philosopher of China, has said, leadership is like the breeze, the rest are the grass. When the breeze blows, the grass bends. Which side you want the grass to bend, it shall bend that side. The leadership of the president is bending all of you towards, towards respect for human rights and I think the world will know about it, will be knowing about it, but I have known about it he, while coming here, and I enjoyed your hospitality. Uh, His Excellency uh, President Tahyagin el gave a very inspiring speech. Uh, he uh, came through as a very committed and very uh, uh, believer, a great believer in human rights for his people and worldwide. He made uh, his speech really will be a uh, kind of inspiring doc doc uh, text for us. The words he mentioned about the uh, uh, importance of a human life, uh, the right to life, the uh, importance of fighting torture and impunity, uh, the importance of uh, defending uh, the rights of women and the rights of Ch children, all these things are very important to us and uh, we will always remember this meeting as a turning point in, the hist in our APF efforts to uh, protect and uh, promote the human rights in our region and in our states. This morning the president gave a very impressive speech. He talked about democracy and the role of the Mongolian government in support to democracy as well as the role of National Human Rights Institute of Mongolia to monitor uh, human rights situation in the world and at home. Uh, the support of the government for NHRI to move ahead to the glo global conditions and help support, protect and promote human rights uh, is something that the government is willing to support. And I feel that uh, Mongolia is uh, fortunate to have the president with such a vision. And of course, uh, the National Human Rights Institute of Mongolia uh, would be uh, support supported and they can now work very hard without fear that they will overstep on someone. Uh, I applaud really what the president uh, has uh, said in his speech. Uh, to me it was a human rights speech and I, I liked especially you know I liked his uh, uh, willingness and uh, attitude towards the human rights. I, I, I liked especially what he said about the appropriations of uh, death penalty. And this is uh, actually our human rights uh, uh, consistent demand, you know, and we would like also other countries, you know, to follow the steps of eliminating death uh, penalties and also the, uh, the, the new legislations he introduced uh, and the courage he showed, uh, although maybe the, the, uh, the cultural uh, environment would act against uh, such uh, introducing those uh, courageous steps towards improving human rights. Uh, uh, and I have, uh, we have to say that uh, by mere hosting such activities, uh, the EPF, which includes uh, international uh, uh, national human rights uh, institutions, 
and to have all these discussions around the subjects of human rights and Mongolia to be well prepared for, uh, for this uh, uh, conference. And I think this is uh, an important contribution uh, of Mongolia towards the human, uh, uh, human rights and will open up to the other uh, countries. This is the first time I come to Mongolia and I was so curious you know, to see uh, Mongolia, especially after the 10 years or so, okay, uh, and we, we had uh, maybe different impressions before uh, what we find here, and I think it's something admirable, and I have to, uh, uh, really, I wish you the, the, uh, all uh, the best uh, for prosperity and also for improvement of human rights, more improvement of human rights. There is no limit, actually, no ceiling on what we can achieve towards the human life. And what the, as the president said, you know, a human life is life. A human rights, for example, is, the, is life. A human rights is a mission. And we, all of us will, will, will work on this mission.